welcome to Hot Topics Stockholm 2014. Today we had two back-to-back -back panel discussions, one about VC funding rounds in Scandinavia and the other about international expansion. Why don't you take a look? One of the great things a country can do is make this kind of culture of entrepreneurship and networks where you can very easily get connected to everyone you need to get connected to in a sort of quick and efficient way. And that's exactly what's happening in Sweden right now. And what I think is important for the, for the local VCs in Scandinavia is to actually be there in the first round, in the seed round or in, or in the first early stage round. Um, if we're not, uh, we're obviously going to... Um, uh, be put aside, stay outside of the, of the, of the good investments, of, of the investments who really can pay off. So having someone just around the corner is probably more valuable for, for the entrepreneurs in the very early days. Um, so I think there's a big difference in terms of which, which stage the company is in. Well, you know, I, I think the natural tendency is for people to always go for big markets. And if we just build a company for Scandinavia alone, it's, the home market is not big enough. So there's a natural tendency that these companies at some stage have to progress outside of the home market. They have to grow and, and at some point they also have to go to the United States. So that's why in certain instances they'll look for international capital or at least perceived international capital. Pretty much every deal we do we expect to co-invest with either some local angels, local VCs. We think that's a really important way of working to get some on the ground knowledge and contextual understanding of a business, but also this kind of international feel of uh, partnering with them. In today's globalization, markets are really becoming closer, so a company not considering or even preparing for expanding internationally is losing out on a huge market opportunity. If you look at the Nordics, uh, and the amount of capital that we have attracted, we attract about 15 to 20 percent of the VC money in Europe, and we are 4 percent of the population. And even better, you know, all those 20 percent that we have attracted, we actually return more than 30 percent of the VC returns in Europe. Going internationally is all about making sure that you can win the market. So go when you're comfortable with your, your product market fit. Uh, when you know that you've got a good handle on, on really the value of, of what you're doing. Um, but as soon as you have that, it's, it's more a matter of, of, of choosing the markets, the right markets, and really going for them wholeheartedly. I think any company should consider expanding internationally as soon as they realize that their product is an international, has an international opportunity. So as, as soon as it goes beyond the whatever domestic interest you, you may have in it, then you should consider expanding internationally. As you expand, it is so important to make sure that the corporate culture and the values of the company are expanded along with you. Now, I think you need to be humble to understand what is, what is the, the essence of your culture and how do you transfer that into the subcultures that are always created when you go into other countries. Traditionally, there's been, um, Scandinavian companies have been very good in innovation and technology, but they have been uh, far poor when it comes to commercializing their products. So there's not a really sales culture in, in Sweden. So, and that's uh, still something that I think Scandinavian companies suffer from. Anything that has to do with the digital space internet, you know, the US, the UK, th those are the big markets. And they really haven't realized that there's a tremendous rollout of 4G networks happening across Asia right now. The penetration of smartphones is double digit increasing every month. And I, and I don't think that has just really caught on. So I think, you know, it's interesting to see the mobile ecosystem around mobile internet right now. I think we are pretty much where we're at the millennium stage where the, the internet was all about killing time and, and communication. That's where mobile internet has been about for the last three, four years. Uh, with, and actually, if you look at it, Scandinavia is dominating that space with King.com, uh, Rovio, Angry Bird, and Supercell, and so forth. So out of the four biggest companies in that space, three of them are from this region worldwide, which is amazing, I think. And I think the next big phase, though, is exactly what happened on the internet around the millennium, which was when you go to commerce. And I think we will see some extremely interesting um, innovation happening vertical by vertical and for retail in a whole. 
Uh, and of course, one vertical that is already happening is, is, uh, is Taxi with Uber. Uh, that's a US company. And of course, uh, my own company, Rap, is really well positioned to look at the whole retail situation and how mobile app will actually drive that in terms of how consumers and retailers will, will be able to transact more, more efficiently.